Hey guys, Mike here at Image Tutorials. Welcome back to a new video. All right, well, as you can see, we're gonna do a new video in 3D code today. And, um, you know, as I've uh, been progressing with working with 3D code, I found it to be uh, increasingly amazing, okay? Quite a lot of stuff you can do in here. And one of the things that we're gonna do today is we are going to look at smart materials and we're gonna create one uh, of our own from scratch, okay? So let's just get started. We're going to go to Paint UV Map Mesh, and we don't necessarily going to, we're not going to load a mesh, but you can just do that from here. And we'll just uh, take this guy here, just this standard uh, swatch, or I don't know what it looks like, a webcam or something. Okay, I think it's called a swatch. All right, all right. So we've got this guy, and um, what we're going to do is we're going to apply one of the existing smart materials to it. Okay, so here's your smart material tab on the right and we'll just go to let's say metals and we'll just load that up and then we'll kind of click through our options here and see what we got let's do this guy okay we can move our preview window so we can kind of see what that's going to look like all right and we can tweak the settings obviously so that's what i'm going to do and i'm going to make sure that i have my depth control on Okay, and I have my uh, color and I have my uh, um, glossiness. Okay, I'm going to click on the fill bucket because I want it to be filled completely. And I'm going to go up to layer and select, do I want to fill the entire layer? Yes. And here we go. And depending on the material that you choose, you're going to need to create a curvature map or an ambient occlusion map. And 3D code does that for you. All right. Now you can see that this is, uh, you know, it looks metal-ish, but you know, we have the option to tweak some things. So what we'll do is, uh, let's see, we'll take this guy and we'll do that on top, okay? All right, already you can see that we have a very interesting uh, material. So that's a little bit about smart materials. Now. The purpose of this video is to create our own, okay? So we're just gonna go to File, and we're gonna go to New, and we're not gonna save this. We're gonna start over, and we'll just take one of these spheres here, okay? Uh, I'm gonna do automatic mapping. It's not really relevant, but that's fine. Okay, so we've got this straightforward, kind of clunky sphere, all right? Okay, so um, in order for us to create a new material here, First, we're gonna to go to this folder on the right, the folder with a little plus on it, okay? And that will allow you to create a name for the folder. Now, I'm gonna call this rock, okay? Because that's what I wanna add. So we now have a new folder, and in this folder, there's nothing going on, as you can see, and we can click on new, which will give us a number of options. Now, first, we need to create our material, okay? So I'm gonna to go to Photoshop, and uh, what I did is I went online and I looked for a free seamless texture of a rock material. So I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to look for my rock texture, which is this guy here. So we can kind of plug this in as our color map, and I want to create one additional uh, map for, let's say, uh, depth, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this one out. I'm going to go to Image and let's do auto contrast, which is nice. And then we'll go to adjustments and black and white. And there is already pretty much black and white, so we're not gonna see a lot of change. Select OK, file and save as. And we'll save this, uh, save this out as rock depth, okay? Save it as a JPEG on our desktop. And here we go. All right, back to 3D code. Okay, so here's where we left off. Now, first I want to name this guy. So I'm gonna call it Rock. And we're gonna start off by selecting a color texture uh, next to this guy right here, okay? So we're gonna click on that. There we go. Now we're allowed to select our Rock texture. And as you can see, it immediately applies that to our swatch here, all right? 
Now you can do a lot more. You can do a roughness texture, metalness, uh, all depending on what you want to create. I'm just going to keep it basic. I'm going to go with the color and with the depth. So I'm going to select my depth here and I'm going to create the uh, based on the rock depth file that we have. And as you can see, that's changing. And here you have the option to uh, left click and drag, which allows you to increase or decrease the depth. Okay. And as you can see on the right, as we move that up, it's changing. So let's do, we'll do something like so. Okay. So that's all there's to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on save. So now if we are in our smart materials, we have a tab called rock. And here we have the option to select this guy. Now I'm going to apply it to this guy right here. So again, I'm going to click on my fill bucket. I'm going to select this material and I'll just move my preview over my sphere so you can kind of see it. And I'm going to go up to layer and fill layer. There we go. And there you have it. There's our standard material applied to this uh, sphere here. Now, <clears throat> if we wanted to have that, uh, you know, have it look slightly different, we'll do control Z to go back and I'll right click and pull down the intensity and we'll do it again. This has more a, I would say dry concrete look. Okay. We'll hit control Z to go back. I'll push up that intensity with my right mouse. Let's try that again. And again, totally different look, All right? And let's say that this is, you know, a piece of concrete of a wall or whatnot, and you know, you want some graffiti on it or whatever, you can go to uh, paints and I'll just uh, use this color. I'll take my paintbrush and I'll uh, right click and pull in to kind of, you know, make that smaller. And you can just kind of, you know, brush that on. It's going to go back and turn off my depth here. So we're only going to see the paint layer. And there you have it. You have a complete new smart material to use in 3D Code. So yeah, hopefully this was a helpful tutorial for you guys. And if you have any questions, please let me know. And I'd love to help you if I can. Okay, see you guys next time. Bye.